how I think of adaptogens is filling up what I refer to as our body's vital reserve. Okay, so think about in our bodies, this is metaphorical, but if we have a reservoir that is our vitality, and at any time we are exposed to a stressor, which is inevitable, like there's stressors in the air that we breathe and the food and the you know people honking at us, the news, it, we're always gonna be exposed to stressors and that's okay. The trick is how do we not get stuck in that stress response state to the point that it becomes chronic? Because stress is, is wonderful. You know, it's a, it's a short term, our bodies go into a stress response state to keep us alive. So that's a brilliant tactic of evolution, but where it's become dangerous is when we're stuck in it. We are back. What's going on, everybody? How's it going? All right, so listen. I can't wait to get into this episode, of course, but I am more so way more excited that I finally get to announce I am opening up my very own yoga studio in San Francisco. If you've, (laughs) yay, insert the yay. Um, I wonder if we can do that. Um, If you've been following on Instagram, I've been keeping like super secretive. I was hoping I was going to announce last week, but it just didn't get to happen. And so now I officially get to put it out there into the universe and into uh, podcast land and into Instagram land. I am opening up my own space. So yeah, it's been a lot of hard work. Um, it's interesting. This uh, this episode is you know uh, is entitled "Why Am I So Tired?" and I feel like the last collectively, you know, me and a few friends and and uh, we've just been saying how tired we are, and I've been sleeping more and I've been taking more breaks and I have been you know doing the Danny thing of not burning out instead of burning out. You know, I've been like really looking back and Danielle came on the show and she just gave some insight on on some really cool ways to look at how we can take care of ourselves. You know, and so we uh, we talked about adaptogens, and we get into it. And uh, as I start to move forward in this journey of opening up a yoga studio, her advice really, really, really is is hitting me pretty dang close to home. So I'm really excited to uh, uh, share a life hack that I learned from her with all of you. I didn't realize there was so much to, um, yeah, just different different remedies outside of like sleep, water, and the normal like nutritional things that you that you normally think about, but some other things to to, to tune in. Uh, without further ado, here goes my request for a podcast review. So do not forget that the show only happens because of you. Um, and so the more that we get this show out there to our friends, we share these episodes, we uh, post on Instagram and get the more that we do reviews on iTunes, just the, the better this is for all of us. Cause I get to continue to do the show and share the journey. So, uh, head down to iTunes and leave us a, a review and, uh, yeah. Here goes session or episode rather 161. Hi, Danielle. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm actually really excited to talk to you today. <laughs> Same. Like I love talking to all my guests. Don't get me wrong. Like truly, they're all great. But <laughs> I'm when I was reading like what like the different things that me and you could chat about and what we could get into. I feel like I've just been complaining to my boyfriend for the last like six weeks. Just like I'm exhausted all yeah. of the time. And so, you know, I, I look, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of people experiencing so much, but there's, th- I know that there's more information out there, or there's gotta be things that I'm not looking at that can really, you know, we can start to look at what's going on or what I'm missing. So that's, that's just my, like <laughs> my, my start to this. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're not alone in being, in being tired. And there's yeah. a lot of reasons for that physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, just what we're all living through right now. Like we are tired and no wonder, look at the amount of stress that we are, are put against. It's like, you know, I think about someone's body who's like going off to space and the amount of stressors that they're exposed to and like zero gravity. And it's like, that's what we're all experiencing every day. Like just through the news and the energy in the world and it's exhausting our systems. And so no matter what we're eating or how much we're meditating or how much yoga we're doing. Like there is a lot of physical deficiencies in our body because of what we're utilizing to just cope with the the daily stressors. Yeah. 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 So let's talk like, before we really start to dive into this, Daniel, let's talk a little more about your background. Yeah. There's a lot of different pieces to it. Um, I guess on paper, I'm a registered herbalist of the American Herbalist Guild. That's kind of our, 
one certifying body in the U.S. that recognizes practitioners who work with the plants. And uh, I'm a mm-hmm. holistic nutritionist, so it's not as if I just prescribe herbal formulas. I look at what the body is up to as a whole and how can we use both supplements, nutrition, and herbs, as well as lifestyle practices to rebuild the foundation of the body so that symptoms disappear rather than treating symptoms. It's a really pretty much complete opposite approach to what most of us are used to in the West with medicine, but very traditional when we look at TCM or Ayurveda or folk cultures around the world. Like in many of these traditions, there was never this like, oh, here's the the ailment and let's combat that. It was like, oh, why is the body not able to right. deal with that? Let's see what the body's missing and build the body up enough so that whatever temporary symptom is being expressed will dissolve once the body's strong enough to manage it. And so that's where real solutions come, right? That's like long-term solutions. So nutritionists, I teach mycology, which is the the science and study of, of mushrooms. So specialize in functional mushroom-based treatment. And day-to-day, um, I'm the national educator at the functional food company for Sigmatic um, and currently writing a book. So I'm deep in the trenches of researching and writing right now, which has been really fun. <laughs> I saw like that. You. I saw your little email responder. I was like, she's right. <laughs> what do you mean? I do nothing. I hang out. <laughs> I got nothing going on. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, juggling? I feel seen. I, <laughs> <laughs> I feel seen and attacked all at the same time. <laughs> just seen, what, uh, just so, seen. Uh, let's get into the let's get into first off, we love Four Sigmatic. We we love, love, love Four Sigmatic. How did you man, there's so many ways that I want to go about this, but I guess it, it would it would be helpful for 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 me to understand, you know, why the mushroom why did you go there? Like what made you want to go and study? Yeah, I never thought it was about the mushroom. And mm-hmm. now I look back and I'm like, oh, the mushrooms were part of every step. They're like these silent wizards that are like, look at me, look at me, look at me throughout all of it. And I like to say that you don't find the mushrooms, the mushrooms find you. And if you've ever mm-hmm. been on a, a forage or a mushroom hunt, that's really how it goes. I remember the first time I went and hunted for morels uh, in the spring. I used to live in Colorado and I was so excited. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what to look for in the right trees and, and, you know, this amount of dampness. And I'm like out there looking for the morels. I was probably out there three hours and nothing. I'm like, what the heck is going Mm -hmm. on? And I finally stopped and I had this like regroup session. I was out there with my best friend and we're just like, let's this is enjoy where we're at. It's like look around and smell the trees and the essential oils from the forest and just kind of bathe in where we're at. I just took a moment and literally hadn't moved, was probably in this one spot for five or 10 minutes. And once I opened my eyes, we like did a little meditation or grounding, I looked down and I was standing in an Uva Ursi patch, which is a, another amazing herbal medicine. It's called Kanikanik, but uh, Uva Ursi patch, and there was a morel like a few inches from my foot, you know? And it was like this moment Mm. of full surrender so that the mushrooms kind of reveal themselves to you. Um, And on a, that's like a very physical example of that happening. But through my work, whether it was studying, I've done permaculture design work and compost was always a big piece of that. So like the mycorrhiza and the, the, mycelial networks in the soil, you know, were kind of rearing their heads. And then uh, I studied in Asia and lived out there for about three years. And mushrooms are such a big part of both culinary practice as well as the medicine. Um, Came back to the States, went to school for herbal medicine, and there was almost no classes or education around fungi in, in my grad school. I was like, what? This is a big missing piece. So I kind of started being curious about fungi on my own. Um, like, why aren't we talking about this? And I, I started growing mushrooms and kind of just diving into my own work with that. And when I opened my clinical practice, I had no idea what kind of clients were going to come to me. And time and time again, it was people that said, 
you know, I've tried everyone. You're my last resort. What can you do for me? And what that brought to the table was a lot of autoimmune conditions, chronic illness, you know, ailments that the Western world was like, sorry, we don't have a a name for that. We don't have a label for that. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with you. These people are like, there's a lot going on and no one sees me. Um, And in these kind of extreme cases, there were very few herbs that were going to be both effective and safe enough for the kind of unknowns that uh, these bodies were, were expressing. And so functional mushrooms Mm -hmm. without knowing it became the leading ingredient in these formulas I was making, you know, and after a couple of years, I'm like, Oh, I have a functional mushroom based practice. Um, and again, I never chose it. They just kind of kept, it's like, I don't know, they chose me or something. And now I'm just so grateful. <laughs> like I owe yeah. everything to these mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're incredible. I feel, I feel it. That's, <clears throat> I've recently started to, I, I mean, maybe this is just in my own little bubble, the more awareness I've, I've, I, I'm a big fan of not trying to take as many medicines as possible. Like I don't love pumping my system with too much stuff. Although I do believe in Western medicine, like from time to time, there are certain, you know, things that I, I do need to care, be cared for in a certain type of way, but I'm always looking for different, um, let's say like, I'm really big into life hack. I love that. Like there are certain, like when I discovered yoga nidra, I was like, where have I been with all? Like, why did I resist or push back against this for so long? Because whenever I'm tired or like exhausted or whatever, I'll take a nidra and it's like, boom, it's almost like I've gotten like, you know, five hours of sleep or whatever it is. Yep. Um, I started doing cold therapy and, you know, I do cold showers now and, you know, lemon water in the morning and things that really just like, how can I live my life as an optimal human, Mm. right? Because the more that I live optimally, I can show up and teach and I can like do the thing and I can actually be present and I can lead by example, which is also an important part to this. Yep. So in my little journey of, you know, life optimization and even just with yoga, which teaches me often to to go and reflect and do self-care, I feel like mushroom therapy has has come up a lot and I'm going to say it brutally wrong probably, but adaptogens and, you know, like I don't really understand fully the benefits. Mm. Um, And I have a feeling that there's got to be some sort of link to me being not only exhausted because I do the most, but I do sleep, I drink the water, like I do all the things that I'm supposed to, but there's got to be other things that I might be missing or blind spots that could maybe help help me live a little more optimally, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking... How do we, what, what, what kind of therapy, like, or what kind of, you know, like in your, in your, in in your world, when you're seeing what's going on with everybody around, you know, right now, like what things are out there to, to help us? Like, what can we use to help us live a little more optimally right now? Yeah. So adaptogens, you kind of, uh, broke the secret right there and it's luckily not so much a secret anymore. It was for thousands of years, you know, adaptogens have been, the most sacred, revered ingredient in the culture that they're coming from. So ashwagandha or Tulsi in in Ayurveda, like these are the number one medicines of this whole repertoire of different ingredients. In, In TCM in China, you know, we have reishi that's been put on the like doorways of the emperor's palace. And it's illegal for common people with cordyceps too to even if they find some of these mushrooms in the wild, illegal for them to to take it themselves. They have to bring it to the emperor. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> in, yeah, you know, cacao is a, is an adaptogen, and in Mayan culture and Aztecs, like this has been used as a currency. Like these are the gold standards of the foods, the medicines on our planet, and we've we've begun to categorize them into this grouping called adaptogens and. You know, first and foremost, they are just nutritionally speaking, the most abundantly nutrient rich foods on the planet. Um, Beyond that, there's there's a couple categories that, you know, can classify what adaptogens are, but they're helping our bodies. They're non-toxic. You can't get addicted to them. They're pretty safe for almost all bodies. Um, They they have this balancing effect in the body. So we call that non-specific, which means they're not pushing our body in one direction or another. Even some of our 
you know, lovely herbs, they, they have a direct effect in the body. It's like, you know, you take valerian, it's going to put you to sleep or you take, um, you know, a, a green tea or a matcha, you're going to wake up like adaptogens work with right. the body that they're being ingested by to help that body find a state of balance of equilibrium. Um, and there's a lot of different ways they do this through their immune modulating properties through, you know, this abundance of different antioxidant properties in them through their work with the HPA axis and the endocrine system. Um, but really what's important to know is they're helping bring our bodies into a state of, of balance. They're taking us out of the super high stress fight or flight, you know, stage that so many of us are in. And when we're in that level of functioning, I mean, our bodies think we're on survival mode. So all the other functions of being a human mm -hmm. being, they go on airplane mode. It's like, I'm not thinking about whether I'm hungry or I'm tired yeah. or, you know, I want to have sex right now or whatever other like, you know, human body. Yeah, like, it, totally. It's, it's on the back seat. And so we have to consider how stressed we are, you know, and especially in the past year, it's like, I, I don't deal with no matter what someone comes to me with, if they have headaches or they're gaining or losing weight or they have a rash on their arm, whatever it might be. The first question is like, how, how's your stress response? You know, cause are you, are you kind of running on this autopilot state? And once we can get the body back into a state where it can, it's like meditating and, and getting clear and from that place, we can actually see what's mm. going on in the body. But until then, you could just put Band-Aids on symptoms all day without treating what's what's really going on and building the body from the root. So um, adaptions are, are the, the really, it's kind of like that life hack shortcut, you know, powerhouse way to bring your body into a state of balance um, without doing that much, right? It's like we can add these, this is mind blowing to me how easy it is to get adaptogens into our life today. Like if you, if you study the the history of these, it's like you had to be so special to even get your hands on these. Like you would work your whole life or be willed <laughs> the location of this, you know, certain route on your deathbed, like passed on. And, and now it's like, these are in the shelves of our supermarkets and we don't know that they're there and what they can do for us. So it's, and we've never needed them more. And so there's, I think that the gap to getting there is just the understanding, the conversation, the education. So we can realize, wow, that's, that's my life hack right there. And I, I can, you know, add it to my coffee. I can just, I mean, it's never been easier to take these things and boy, do we need them. Yeah. I, I, uh, one of my, you know, I've been doing the, uh, this year specifically, I'm doing a new habit every month and not like a, not an actual, like, well, I'm going to add this to my plate but more. What am I going to drop from the past and how do I, you know, then become a better, a better leader, a better human, a better, whatever it is, better, you know, brother, brother, son, like all mm. the things that like, w what is it that I want to really grow into and, and how do I want to support a community kind of deal? So like, you know, the beginning of the year was like, all right, so I'm going to start meal prepping and I'm going to stop like eating out. And and it's been actually since like mid-December and I've just been loving it. I'm like yes. Instapotting everything and it's first time we can do a whole episode on Instapot. Yes. <laughs> it's the best. And, um, you know, and then I, I, I did a different gym routine because all I was doing was yoga. I mean, yoga, right? That's all I've been doing and doing and doing. And it's starting to take a toll on my body, not the best way. And this last month, I decided to do no apps. That was the one of the big, no more doom scrolling, no more Facebooking. Like, unless it's like work related, mm. that's gone. Like, you know, it's it's just not happening. And all my devices are now out of my bedroom and they're not allowed in there, period. Like, Amazing. It's just no laptops, no nothing in there. So I'm thinking about this month, uh, I kind of cheated and I did, I, I skipped cold showers for a little bit and they. I kind of just forgot and so I'm bringing them back this month. Cool. But my next month's goal, I'm thinking about adding some sort of different like ritual. And, you know, as we were getting ready to like set this up, I was like, well, wouldn't it be cool for me to, you know, talk to you a little more about what is going on in the world and how 
like, what can I expect in 30 days of adaptogens? I'm so excited. Yeah. So when you're talking about the cold showers, the different yoga practices, Mm -hmm. in my world, I'm I call myself a vitalist practitioner and that's kind of the the field that I I studied within. And it's all about raising our vital force. And this is nothing new. You know, it's called chi or energy. Like how can we raise our vitality to the highest extent possible so we can show up as, as the fullest version of who we are and hydrotherapy, you know, is one of the oldest ways to raise that vital force. We feel when we're in a cold shower, we feel that we're alive. You know, we feel that vital force. Um, And how I think of adaptogens is filling up what I refer to as our body's vital reserve. Okay. So think about in our bodies, this is metaphorical, but if we have a reservoir that is our vitality and at any time we are exposed to a stressor, which is inevitable, like there's stressors in the air that we breathe and the food and the, you know, people honking at us, the news, it, we're always going to be exposed to stressors and that's okay. The trick is how do we not get stuck in that stress response state to the point that it becomes chronic? Cause stress is, is wonderful. You know, it's a, it's a short term, our bodies go into a stress response state to keep us alive. So that's a brilliant tactic of mm-hmm. evolution, but where it's become dangerous is when we're stuck in it. Um, so it's not that stress in and of itself is bad. It's the long-term repeated stress and our body's not being able to get out of that state because we're deficient in a number of things. So we think of this vital reserve, we're constantly stressed and we're pulling from our reserve. It's like the, the reservoir is being drained. What adaptogens do is they're like filling up that reservoir. Okay. So it's not as if oh my gosh, I'm super stressed. I need a pound reishi right now. Sure. That'll, it won't hurt you. It'll be, you know, what it will be. It'll help you. In a, a reishi bit. shots. Yeah. Reishi shots. Um, that's amazing thought. It's like so opposite. Reishi is like so zen. Um, <laughs> that's our next, next Instagram post. Reishi shots. Yes. Oh my God. And then everyone's like, chilling afterwards like whoa what (laughs) (laughs) but yeah like how can we how can we bring fill up the vital reserve so that when the stressor hits right when there's that sense of drought when we need to pull from it it doesn't completely deplete us um so you bring adaptions on board before you need to filling up your vital reserve and essentially what happens is you're still going to be exposed to a stressor but your body will have the tools to more quickly and efficiently get out of that stress response state to bring your body back into a state of equilibrium, right? So this is, this is key. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we can feel the stressor and get out of it, like that was what fight or flight was all about. You know, our, our bodies that are bloodstream is pumping with adrenaline and cortisol among other hormones, giving us that quick sense of energy to fight or run not only do we not do that anymore, the stressors are coming like every few minutes. And so our bodies are stuck with these hormones pumping through us. And we need the tools like adaptogens being the, the most effective option to get us out of that state and back into this state of calm so we can actually be in our vitality. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I, I think, about, yeah, 100%. I think about you know, uh, I, I'm pretty uh, th- I'm well aware a lot of people on the show know, like I went through the worst depression I'd ever had in my entire life last year, as a lot of us struggled just, m- you know, with mental health in general last year because of the state of the world, right? No- nothing's been easy for, for, for a lot of us. And that in combination of like the stress of studio, all the studios closing and having to just, you know, readjust life, I think really just hit me hard. Yep. And I'm a pretty, you know, busy dude. I can I can do a lot. I have a lot going on and I can handle it, you know, normally pretty well. But I felt like not only was I running on empty, but I was running on empty's empty's tank. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, there were certain days where it was like taking a shower was the task, you know, or even yeah. trying to like eat was a task because I felt so like there was nothing left in there. Yeah. There was really, there, there wasn't that vitality that you speak of. There wasn't that X, there wasn't that little 
extra something that I could just kind of lean back on sometimes and be like, oh, okay, you can, you know, you got this until you have your next little sure. um, resting area. And that makes me think too, you know, in your exper- in your experience, you know, does something, I guess, does something like adaptogens help with, you know, like depression and, you know, does it, I mean, the body obviously works in so many different ways, right? It works, it works together and, and having the right nutrients in, in your system is super important for so many things, but is there any direct correlation with that? Yes. And I'm like, how do I tiptoe around this is to like not make direct claims again, because it comes back to whatever the body is experiencing, if it's anxiety or depression or, you know, an autoimmune condition, it's telling us that the body is not in a state of vitality. Okay, so rather than mm. there's herbs that you can that are directly antidepressant, you know, we can make a great formula that's full of our St. John's Word and lemon balm and like address the mm-hmm. depression, but that's not raising the body's vital force so that eventually you don't need that formula. It just serves as the band-aid. So even if the symptom being expressed is is depression um, or the label on that. I would encourage removing that label and looking at what is the body actually feeling? What are you actually experiencing? Okay, we can Mm -hmm. call it depression. What does that look like on a day to day? How's your stress level? How's your energy when you wake up in the morning? Um, You know, motivation. Um, How's your digestive health? And rebuilding and nourishing the body from this really grounded state. And then we see what symptoms dissolve or still remain. Um, And I do want to say, you know, when we talk about that really depleted state, you're not alone and adaptogens aren't the only answer. So I see it's, it's really tempting if you're in that kind of like rock bottom to reach for something like an adaptogen because it does work and it makes you feel better pretty quickly, but that's not the holistic approach. So rather than, okay, I'm just going to like have this adaptogen as my lifeline. I want us to one look at adaptogens there there's a spectrum of adaptogens you know spectrum of most things but there's really nourishing gentle adaptogens on that end it's like ashwagandha and and reishi and some of our berries and on the more stimulating side we have things like you know our ginsengs and the the various eleuthero and more kind of pushy and so if you're coming from a really depleted exhausted state it's critical to take the really, really nourishing adaptogens, right? Almost like nutritive approach, rebuild your your digestive health first and foremost, because so much of our endocrine system is dependent on the health of our gut. So um, rebuilding, mm-hmm. you know, the, the gut lining, flooding the body with pre and probiotics, like really supporting that root center, nutritive adaptogens, lifestyle practices, whether it's meditation or yoga, and then we begin to build and and hopefully raise the vital force enough that those symptoms associated with, with what we label depression begin to, you know, subside. Yeah, I agree. That's something, you know, with, with, with everything, it's not just the, the one-stop shop and it's not the, the silver bullet that's going to make everything happen, you know, in addition to meditation, in addition to, you know, the introspection work in addition to, you know, the breath work in addition to the cold therapy work, there is also, you know, like this is also important to do as well. And it's not just, yeah, I, I think that's such a great point made. Like it's not just the one stop shop and then you're done and then you call it a day and you feel good and then you stop doing it. You have to continue to do it, but recognize that when you do, you're going to feel better for a lot longer, longer term. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, Holistic is, is where it's at, right? That's where we see the long-term effects. And of course we can link direct, like, okay, if you meditate for this amount of time, you know, symptoms of X, Y, or Z have been shown to go down. And we could say the same things with, you know, different adaptogens or superfoods. It's like pointing to a specific compound, you know, we have like this compound called PEA and cacao that, um, you know, it's, like neurotransmitters in the brain, there's different markers where they're lower in people that have depression. And so if we take cacao, you know, it activates these neurotransmitters. And we can we can pinpoint that and say, okay, yeah, cacao mm-hmm. for depression. But I think that that's, that's selling ourselves short. 
and we, and it's almost like not doing justice to ourselves to just have this pill for an ill kind of thing or ingredient for an ailment. Mm -hmm. And so how can we bring these different pieces on board to fill us up, to raise our vitality in all the different areas? Because vitality isn't just physical or emotional or spiritual. Vitality encompasses it all. And so we have to like, you know, ourselves as a big round pizza and we have all these different slices that fill us up. We've got to nurture each of them to be whole. Right. Right. You were, you were mentioning earlier, you know, when we're in that just stress, you know, and then you finally hit either that it's either like that crash or that pause, but direct for, for me is going, going, going. And then I hit that crash button really hard in December. And I kind of, you know, just decided to make some really the, the big changes that I decided to do this year. It was like, okay, what life changes and not what new habits, not 20 days to, you know, a calmer mind or, you know, a week to a six pack or any of that, but like, what, how is it that I actually want to live moving forward? Mm. You know, and how do I, how do I want to wake up every day? Not just in the outs in the outside, but in the inside. Yeah. And I have to say, taking two weeks off of no work, which I hadn't done in like five years, within like day four, after sleeping almost 12 hours every night, I woke up and was just like, you're tired. <laughs> you're yeah. tired. Yeah. You, needed a, you needed a long nap. Mm-hmm. And even after, you know, just the end of those four days at first was like, wow, I could actually think again. The things that I thought that were so confusing and so, you know, I, I wasn't really sure of like. No, I totally had the right answers. I just yeah. needed a little space and permission to breathe. But we get pushed so hard. You know, we almost glorify. I've talked about this plenty of times in the show. We, but do. we glorify being pushed. Yep. We glorify doing the most. Yep. You know, we glorify go, 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 go versus, you know, what is it? I think about your vitality approach. Like, what does a vital life for me look like? Mm. You know, that's not just feeling good, but also having balance. Yep. Being able to have some time off, being able to, uh, you know, enjoy a fun conversation with a new friend on a podcast because it's something that fills you up and it's not like a, a forced thing to do. You know, it's, it's more than just, you know, make, make these goals, hit these targets, keep doing the most. Okay. The next thing is, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. How much money do you have now? And la da 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 da. But like how actually the, the framework now has changed. Like, what do I want it to feel like? And mm. how do I want it to be expressed both internal and external? Yeah. Where did you go on your, your time off? I, I sat here in this house nice. and I turned off the internet, which Sweet. was, yeah, I, I completely shut off my phone. Okay. You know, it was very like, listen, for four days, I'm going to be offline. I need to just kind of get lost and find myself. And yeah. I did. I was really, you know, that that's really where the the whole like, you know, let's unplug the phone at night and let's not bring any electronics upstairs and, you know, all that really came about and it's been such a game changer. Yeah. There's still some days where I like try to like break the rules a little bit and I just have to remind myself like, look Danny, no one's going to police you on this. Mm. Just like no one's going to police me on taking the adaptogens and, you know, all the other things that I know are going to make me feel better. I get to discern how do I want to feel? Yeah. You know, and so yeah. if it's something as easy as ordering some mushrooms that knowing that it's going to continue to make my life better and, you know, I'm going to continue to think more clear and all, all the things, it may be sometimes tough, but I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing that you were just there because I was thinking, oh, the last time I took a big break was a, a, just over a year ago and I went and sailed from Panama to Colombia. So I was fully disconnected on a boat yeah. in the middle of the ocean for a week. And the amount of insights and energy and peace that flooded through me. I remember I, I recorded on a podcast right when I came back and I was like, what mental state was I? It was so different than any <laughs> other show. It's like, we all just got to see the world and like go travel. And, you know, when you were talking about that glorification of the push, I feel that travel is such a key indicator for that. And this became so clear and maybe it's just, you know, unplugging in our own house, which is more doable today, but it's not everywhere in the world that glorifies that push, push, push. Like I used to live in India and mm -hmm. there's different three doshas, you know, in all different types of folk medicine, there's different body right. types. Like in the West we are the 
it's very new to feel like everybody's the same. Um, so in Ayurveda, there's these three right. doshas, uh, pitta being the fire, kapha, earth, and vata being the air element. And kapha or the earth grounded, chill, like that is what's glorified. And it was so fascinating to me when I was living mm-hmm. there. They're like, oh, you know, if someone's like super successful or running all the time or like grinding, they're like, oh, that person's so off balance, you know, like pitta imbalance, like they're way too right. fiery. And that's me. Right. I'm like so much fire. Right. Like, mm-hmm. And they're like, eek, yeah, you got work to do, girl. And my friend that I was with <laughs> was like so chill, you know, and like just really caught the energy and grounded and calm and like they're like yeah that's amazing she's got it going on like that's what you need to do to be able to sit and meditate or like that's the gold standard and so it's helpful to kind of just get out of our own bubble and realize like this isn't normal it's not just like that we should all grind as hard as we can as humans we've created that mindset in this place that we live and um it's not what success looks like for the rest of the world. And it's probably not what success looks like for a lot of us if we really break it down. So yeah, I think what Mm -hmm. is health? What does success actually look like for you? What does it actually feel like? And we have a little bit of a Mm -hmm. upper hand to combat what we're told it looks like. Um, Or, you know, we're told it's like the more you do, the better you are, the more money you make, the better you are. Um, And we see people that do grind all the time or do have the most money, like that does not correlate to being the happiest or most fulfilled or most in love. Like I've lived with hill tribe villagers yeah. in the back country of, of Thailand. And it's like the happiest people, most generous people I know. And they don't have anything. And so we really have to like refocus and like pull ourselves out of the grind that we're just, it's, it's autopilot, you know, so we have to be extra aware of what we're in and how can we take a moment to look at, is this really what, how I want to feel? Is this what success and abundance and vitality looks like for me? Maybe, maybe not. And then from that place, we get the chance to, to recreate and step into the practices that actually bring us to our own unique vitality. And at least if you're going to go that hard, get some adaptogens in your body. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And we've always like, <laughs> that's the wild thing. Like we're going this hard and we're not even using adaptogens. Like forever we've relied on these ingredients to keep us going. It's like, if you were, you know, yeah. going out to fight in a battle, you were pumped up with adaptogens beforehand. Like if you were, Mm -hmm. you know, after giving birth, you had certain adaptogens to to take with you. Like no matter what, it's like, oh, this is like a requirement to do what we have to do. And now we're running full steam ahead, maybe faster than other ever. And we've forgotten that we have these like allies. Like these are our helpers. These are our friends to Mm -hmm. keep us fueled to do what we've got to do. And so, yeah, it's such a no brainer. You know, if there's one simple thing, bring the most powerful foods on earth into your body. Like why not? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to share my journey with adaptogens coming this next month and I'll, I'll definitely stay in touch with you and we'll kind of, I just, I want to, I'm curious to see what my energy level is going to be like this next month, you know, going from zero to, you know, the the whole 30 days with it, but that's going to be my commitment is to keep doing it every single day and see what I feel like throughout it. Perfect. I want you to do, I do this with my clients, a before checklist and then an after checklist. Cause when symptoms fall away, we forget. It's this really weird human yeah. thing. We're like, Oh, I forgot that I, you know, had digestive issues every day for the last four years. Like they're gone now. Um, and so I'll send you this little checklist and you will rate, you know, how well you're focusing, your digestion, your sleep, your energy levels, you'll put it away, take the adaptogens every day for a month. And then fill out the same form and you can compare them side to side. And that's like the best evidence for yourself to really see how your body shifted. Oh, that's perfect. We'll maybe do a PDF of that in the show notes and we'll invite all the listeners to maybe do the same with me for the next, uh, for the next month of April, we'll do 30 days of adaptogens and see how we feel. Let's do it. I love it. Danielle, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you coming in and sharing your knowledge. And I was just so curious as to, you know, how, 
how I know I want to continue to live a a great, healthy lifestyle. And I know the listeners are not only yoga practitioners, but also into living better themselves. So thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge. You bet. Thanks so much for having me. Until the next Seeker and Sage, this is Danny and Danielle saying peace out. Peace out.